another onslaught of Russian propaganda, this time flooding the Internet with the hashtag Syria hoax, an attempt to shift the blame on that chemical attack by the Assad regime in Syria. We take you to the front lines of the high stakes cyber Cold War, where global intelligence agencies are hard at work trying to thwart the next salvo. Here's ABC's chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross. They did it again. Within hours of last week's U.S. missile strike against Syria, a cyber operation with the hashtag Syria hoax, pushed by the Russians, according to U.S. analysts, became the number one trending topic on Twitter in the U.S. It was picked up by Russian influencers online who pushed the story and the hashtag until it entered the alt-right community in the United States, at which point it really took off and started to trend very heavily. The fake news campaign picked up speed today, with Syrian officials calling these horrific images part of the U.S. hoax. Oh, 100 percent for its fabrication. This is a, a new iteration of an old type of warfare. And the disinformation from the Kremlin over Syria comes just months after its successful effort to use similar tactics to meddle with the U.S. presidential election. Absolutely, they're at it again. And they will continue to go after who is opposed to their interests. And Robbie Mook should know what he's talking about. He was the campaign manager for Hillary Clinton, the target of the Russian hacking and fake news operation last year. They want us to be confused and they want us to turn against ourselves so that they become stronger and we become weaker. All run, U.S. officials say, out of a secretive Russian intelligence operation based in the city of St. Petersburg. We know that they have a large building in St. Petersburg that is the home base for a team that is tasked with manipulating public opinion in other countries. Professor Phil Howard of the Oxford University Internet Institute in Great Britain has been studying the Russian fake news cyber operation for several years. We know that they have hundreds of employees who do this work and perhaps thousands of other volunteers who do this kind of work for the country um, as patriots for Russia. And Professor Howard says the Russian operation, in many ways, similar to an American version imagined by the creators of the TV show Homeland. They're just a bunch of fake users with online lives that you manage, right? uses thousands of fake Twitter and Facebook accounts called bots. Do any of these ring a bell? Iraq Bob. That's me. Navy wife. That's me too. To flood social media with their fake news and dominate public perception, a technique the spies have borrowed from commercial marketers. A couple of years ago, we started seeing them used by the Russian government to promote content related to the Kremlin's view on international politics. And now we've seen this sort of strategy of using computers to manipulate public opinion. We've seen that strategy move back to the U.S. And now new information is providing a much more extensive and clearer view of how the Russians, under orders, U.S. officials say, from Vladimir Putin, use their Internet skills and their spies in an effort to help elect Donald Trump as president. Congratulations, Mr. President. For example, it was a month before the election, October 7th at 3.26 p.m., when an official statement from the U.S. intelligence community said Russia had hacked the Democrats. Then, 37 minutes later, at 4.03 p.m., the first report came that an outtake from Access Hollywood showed Trump's crude, sexist remarks. When you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. <laughs> Whatever you want. Grab him by the And then it was just 29 minutes later, at 4.32 p.m., when WikiLeaks posted the first hacked emails of Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta. Thousands of emails appearing to come from Clinton campaign chair John Podesta released. Hacked by the Russians months earlier, but held back until this pivotal moment. Clearly someone in the Kremlin saw that this very compromising uh, tape had come out and they decided they needed to inject this information into the bloodstream. Someone in the Kremlin. You have to believe that. I don't know as a fact, but it is my belief that the Kremlin was pulling the strings on what WikiLeaks was able to do. WikiLeaks denies they were manipulated by the Russians, but congressional investigators say, looking back at the timeline of key events during last year's political campaign, especially during the week of the Republican convention in July, proves the point. On Monday, the Republican Platform Committee made public a pro-Russian plank that would cut back on U.S. help for Ukraine if the Russians attacked there. 
On Tuesday, the Russian ambassador showed up in Cleveland, meeting with the future Attorney General, then-Senator Jeff Sessions, something Sessions would later somehow fail to mention. On Wednesday and Thursday, Donald Trump formally won the roll call vote and then accepted the Republican presidential nomination. I humbly and gratefully accept your nomination for the presidency of the United States. USA, USA, USA. And then on Friday, the first email stolen from the Democratic Party headquarters by the Russians began to appear on WikiLeaks. It was a time that our party needed to unify. It was the time to come together. And? And the Russians introduced information to tear people apart, and people were very angry. I think it fanned flames that pushed people to potentially vote for third-party candidates down the line, people who would have voted Democratic. So it hurt? It absolutely hurt, yeah. And it was very cleverly timed. Whoever was responsible, it was all out. to the delight of this Donald Trump. WikiLeaks, I love WikiLeaks. It's been amazing what's coming out on WikiLeaks. This WikiLeaks is like a treasure trove. The first indication the Russians had hacked the Democratic Party came not from the US, but from Great Britain, from the people inside its electronic spy headquarters called GCHQ, Government Communications Headquarters, in a small town outside London. ABC News was the first American television network whose cameras were allowed inside. Our tour guide, known to us only by his first name, Anthony, started by showing us a bit of spy history, the Nazi German code machine, the Enigma, which the British famously found a way to compromise. Everybody always tries to have secrets. And then on to the GCHQ Crisis Center, where analysts spend 24 hours a day monitoring cyber attacks from around the world. Officials told us this map shows hacking attacks coming from China against Great Britain in just one two-minute time period. Some attacks will get through, so our job is to manage those cyber attacks so they do as little damage as possible. Kieran Martin is the head of a newly created national cybersecurity operation, which spends a lot of time tracking Russian government-sponsored hackers. I think we've seen a significant increase in Russian aggression in cyberspace over the past two years. The Russian active measures were seen across Europe well before they hit the U.S. In Berlin, Russian operatives hacked the computers of the German parliament. In France two years ago, Russian hackers hijacked 12 of the 18 channels run by TV Saint Monde. Everything uh, went down at the very same second. Putting up jihadist propaganda messages, apparently to hide that they were really Russians. The Islamist state had nothing whatsoever to do with it. And then another hack in the wake of a finding by the Dutch safety board that blamed Russia for shooting down a Malaysian passenger jet over Ukraine. How good are the Russians? It is a very capable cyber attack operation. And now adding to the intrigue are the revelations of key Trump staff campaign aides, Paul Manafort, General Michael Flynn, and advisor Carter Page, who all had suspect financial ties with Russia. And Page was actually suspected by the FBI as working as a Russian spy inside the campaign, according to a report this week in the Washington Post. This morning, on Good Morning America, Page denied the allegation to George Stephanopoulos. You know, I do not talk about any uh, ongoing uh, investigations. For all of the Russian efforts to cultivate Trump and help him win the election, the developments this week suggest it may have backfired. We may be at an all-time low in terms of uh, relationship with Russia. And now the Russian operation out of that building in St. Petersburg may be finding new American targets. And now they're coming after Donald Trump. And looking to the future, U.S. officials say they fear the Russians may actually now try to hack in and change actual vote totals in the next election. Probably going to come back again with more skill with uh, a greater desire to cause impact. The alarm has been clearly sounded where the assessment is it will happen in 2020. For Nightline, Brian Ross, ABC News, New York. Our thanks to Brian Ross and his team for that report.